No, audio. Are we? Are we? Is it back as normal? We are on thermal. Great, and the audio is back. Well, VMP, maybe we can look at the line of the zeb of the zebras, if that's possible. We'll just swing across there. And of course, you can see now how wonderfully useful this tool is in the night time. Isn't that cool? And while I don't think it's uh, anything like what the lion can see, I mean, I'm pretty sure he doesn't see a heat signature, it is very, very special to be able to watch animals like that and, of course, broadcast them. And he's biding his time now as night starts to fall. The herds of wildebeest don't seem to have moved a huge amount since we went through them some time back. There they all are. You can see them there. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And look at the warmth of the rocks on the top of the mountain there. And it looks like a city. It's not a city. Well, it is, I suppose, in a manner of speaking. It's a city of wildebeest. And interestingly, the zebra going towards them, I think that's quite telling. I wonder if there isn't some sort of seeking of security amongst a very big herd of wildebeest like that. And if there isn't some sort of thought process, even though it's probably a very instinctual one, that in amongst that many wildebeest, they're highly unlikely to be caught by a lion. Or anything else for that matter. There is, of course, somewhere in amongst that lot a leopard who has stashed a piece, or oh, not a piece, an enormous uh, carcass, not an enormous carcass, a large carcass of wildebeest uh, in a tree. So we might pop back there later, but I think for now we're going to wait and see what this chap does. You can see that he is up and looking despite his corpulence. All right, Brent's lioness is very enthusiastic. You cannot fault her for her trying hard. Let's go back to her and see if this time her efforts pay off.